cold in here, bro. It's very cold in here. About 68 degrees. How's it going, everybody? It's w- freaking Nurglevember. We're closing out Nurglevember. What is this, the last one for November? Um, Looks at phone calendar. <laughs> Qu- quickly, preferably. Uh, yes, it will be the last pod of November. Yeah, as we're recording this, this is the 21st of November, so it should come out uh, this Friday, just after Thanksgiving. For Black all Friday release. Yeah, bla- I actually like that. It Black turns Friday. out that we probably should have done last week's episode this should've week. <laughs> yeah. However, we did no prep for last week. Or this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we should have done a Black Legion episode. And we've done the same oh, thing that again. Oh, that would have been such a great idea. Black Legion episode. I cannot believe that we have waited until... Why did until we not even think of that? I can't believe that we've waited until this very moment to come up with all the show topics. And yet, for the past three days, there has been no discussion of show topics. A little bit... We've been focused on painting. Well, I tell you what I've been focused on. I've Open up that bits box. No, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. We have business to attend to as oh, well. Oh, yes. But... Uh, what I've been focused on is our Spotify listeners may have noticed that the pod from last week didn't show up until Sunday night. Yes, yeah, sorry guys, that was all Spotify. They didn't like the size of our logo. We had to, I had to change the logo. It's Kate, been Kate, on there for weeks. It's been up there for months now. The yeah, same months. thing. And they decided that this week, even though we had a really good pod for you, they were like, "No, the people can't get it until later." Um, Casey wanted to know how to resize and reformat a picture, and I said, you email it to me, and it'll take 45 seconds. He's like, he was the dad who's just like, let me do it. I'm not going to, yeah. (laughs) I I don't even want you to hold the flashlight. We will bonk (laughs) heads. I will be irate. Yeah, it was a weird weekend. Today's show to you, (laughs) today's show is brought to you by Rolling Video Productions. So... Some of you may have given the David and Trait series of mysteries a Google. Checked them out on Amazon and realized... Click the link in the bios. Click the link in the bio and realized Shane is just promoting the his own stuff. And that's correct. But it did sound like a very pro ad. I, heard, I got a piece of feedback to that end. And so it made the proof of concept that we could do ads in the future and sponsor content and things of that nature because... We're both going broke. Yeah, this recession is rough. And to that end, I've started up a new thing with the homie Austin, also a mini a mini gaming hobbyist. And uh, we're doing... Congratulations, th- by the way. We're, I to we're doing video production, things like school plays, sporting events, church events. Bar you, mitzvahs. Weddings, birthdays, all that kind of stuff that you may want to keep in... HD sound and video for posterity is stuff we're doing. Uh, this is mainly focused into the northeast corner of the s- United State of Arkansas, USA. So, our international listeners, I got nothing for you. If you buy him the ticket, he will fly. I mean, that's true. Like, like you know, we can make things happen. You never know. You never know. And so today's episode is brought to you by that. I'll probably make ad copy and we'll run that a month. Again, just to show the people that we can do the thing. So if you or somebody you know has got something that they'd like to promote, between YouTube and all our other podcast sources, we're up to something like six, 800 listens a month now. Yeah, we're, uh, we hit 900 downloads today. That doesn't even count YouTube. So we're yeah. we're Doesn't much further along you? than I thought we were. So that puts us, golly, Casey, we, there's like a thousand people listening to us. Yeah, roughly uh, when they find the time, <laughs> or when we get it posted, right? Um, and we we're th- we're very grateful for you for you guys. You guys are freaking awesome for doing all that. I like when I find, and I'll talk about this a little bit in the bits box when I find somebody that. Uh, I didn't think would dig us, you know, even locally. And they're like, no, listen to it. It's not, it's not awful. I'm like, that's high praise, you know? Yeah, if like a, if a commoner. Not awful. Just like, I'm just a peasant. 40K but this is okay. 40K fanatics. <laughs> not awful. <laughs> not terrible, guys. <laughs> we're, we're a solid five. Casey, open up the bits box and tell me what has Here. been going on. 
So, this last week, we had a lot of great reveals from Warhammer. Gosh, like, so much stuff. We had some, like, we've talked a lot about the Dark Angels in the past. And during this Warhammer World Tournament in Atlanta, Georgia, Games Workshop chose to reveal the new uh, Deathwing... I just snapped my finger. <laughs> the Deathwing Knights? The is that what they're Death called? Deathwing Knights, yeah. Now, is a Deathwing Knight a Terminator? Yes, they are the Terminators, but they are like a unique sect within the Terminators. I see. So within the first company of veterans, there are the Terminators, and within the Terminators, there are the Deathwing Knights. And in the whole first company is Deathwing. But I'm yes, gonna m- I'm going to mess up your entire thing here. Whole nine a- aesthetic. I'm going to I'm going to mess up your entire thing here and ask a question that? that has nothing to do with your bits box. But you've got you've got Space Marine power armor. Yeah. Right. And a guy gets inside of that. Yeah. And they they dress him up. They lock it on. Totally. He if goes they can out. Find it. Yeah. Right. Terminator armor. Is that? Over the top of the power armor, or is that a no, whole different set? No, you're thinking of Centurion armor. It's a different set. Terminator oh. armor uh, sac- tends to sacrifice mobility for general defense, so and it has a force field. So it's the same kind of thing where where a, a guy just jumps up in it, attaches, and he goes. Yeah, I'll show you a picture of, of the like the bisected form, and <laughs> the g- that guy be slouching. And then the and then the um, the one you talked about just now. Yes. Now that's like a battle suit that you strap onto your power armor. The Deathwing Knights tend to have more. No, uh, no, no, not them. The 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 other guys. It's Terminator, and then what's the other thing? Deathwing. You said you said I was thinking about. Oh, you're talking about the Centurion armor. Yes. Yes. Uh, one of the most hated uh, models in the Space Marine range, but I love them. They look so chonky. <laughs> they look cool to me. People complain about the tiny heads, but I'm like, they're a Space Marine. In a suit, in a suit. So, right, yeah, right. the heads are going to be small. So, is an exosuit in a similar way that the, uh, that the what's that baby carrier thing? Oh, the, 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 uh, the, <laughs> the, the dang knight. Oh, gosh, I, you're making me forget this. I know what it's called. Not it's the Grey Knight one, because this is oh. even more ridiculous, but just the open front. Uh, oh, the Invictus Tactical War suit? Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's almost like the Predator, uh, I mean, the, yeah, a- the alien, the alien yeah. loader. I love that thing. Uh, Except th- we're shooting at that poor dude. Yeah, I don't really care for the Invictor Tactical War suit. I thought it was kind of dumb because if you've already got dreadnoughts, why do you need that exactly? And also, if a guy with a sniper rifle gets a lucky shot off, you bet. Like, I don't even know if this thing has a shield, so yeah. Um, but back on topic. It calls into the question the <laughs> validity of the dreadnought, doesn't it? We're not doing an armor episode today. <laughs> we have no main topic <laughs> selected. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> we, we can. Casey, I have a secret for you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we don't have any bosses in this. We, we don't. <laughs> so we can do pretty much whatever we want. As long as the people are listening. And what's crazy is you guys keep listening. You do, uh, apparently, what from what Shane has said. <laughs> <laughs> here, here go me, in my bits box. What you got? I, I've been a terrible hobbyist. I'm not even done with mine. Well, you're gonna, we're gonna bounce back. Okay, go, okay. Go, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go, throw go. it back to do you your because thing, do your there's, thing, there's do your two thing. things. You were talking about that that world championship reveal, multiple reveals, multiple reveals, and uh, I'll go on that real fast. Okay, hit it. I can't believe those SOBs have sold me another box oh, of Chaos Legionary. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, the Night Lords. What serendipity oh, this has been. Dude. I recently, we did we did him, we featured him in one of our recent painting pods. Oh, my gosh. I got a Chaos Lord, yes. not in Terminator armor. I decided I wanted to do him as Night Lords because we had briefly talked it looks great. after a pod about the Night Lords. I put the little lightning bolts on him. He turned out great. And then they come off the top rope. With a Night Lord's kill, kill team. team. Because I already play the kill team, mm. love the kill team. I have the Legionary kill team, which means that when somebody wants WYSIWYG on my Chaos Space Marines, I'm like, hold my beer. Because <laughs> I got all of them. And Night Lords are big in the community. Oh, man, and the Night Lords look so sick. And the paint jobs on those Ooh. miniatures. The aesthetics, too. Man. You, know, you know my favorite thing about the GW heavy metal paint? jobs What's box that? art paint jobs is when they very subtly just throw the instructions out the window 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. Pick, uh, here's an example of one. Um, who's the guy? He's a black Templar, and he's the one stabbing the orc through the chest. Bayard. Okay. Bayard's sword yeah. on the box art is just the silkiest non-metallic metal. There's a reason for that. There's a lore reason for that. Whatever. What I'm saying is, if you go and you look at the GW, here's how to paint something, yeah. they got nothing to help you on that. That you, is you, true. That That's just that's just one of their that painters. That is irritating and true. That's one of their painters just being like, I'm about to stunt. Yeah. Right? And these Night Lords, with their ridiculously tiny lightning, faded in beautifully on their kneecaps. Yeah. They put the lightning on the little kneecaps. Man, they Stunting. look the hair on these guys, the those helmets on these guys. The the blue on those guys is the fading. Claws. You, can, you can you can tell that they that they got their airbrushes out and Ave stuff. Ave Dominus Knox, folks. Man. I got I'm a, I gotta have them. Gosh. I gotta have them and I'm gonna I do them know, in my right? lords. And then I'm gonna have Dude. in my Black Legion army my my little self lore that I made with my yeah. Chaos Lord. And it works. Having been like conscripted by Abaddon himself, yes, because my my army's always an all star cast. Which after we bounce back to you for your bits box, I got one more. <laughs> but I got the all star cast of oh, dudes I, I hate from that you the Black stole Legion. This, this one from me. I really want to talk about these. I guys. mean, these are my dudes. They're so cool. They're so cool. They got so many weapons that don't even have any kind of names or rules, but they're mm. gonna look great because they've got a dead space marine on a pole. Oh man, I got a, I got another piece. I got another little bit that will do not. Out, we'll do it outside the bit, bits box. <laughs> Don't let me forget it. Okay. It's just about tenth edition love. Yeah. Okay. What else you got, Casey? So we've uh, we had the Deathwing Terminators, we had the Night Lords Kill Team, but we also had the brand new Interrogator Chaplain come out. Man, he looks good. You remember the guy I told you about, Asmodai? Oh yeah. The scary guy who will nuke a city just to get a fallen. This is a brand new version of him, baby. I have seen, in fact, I I think it's at friendly local game store, Gamers Haven, the Asmodai old school. Uh, old sculpt, yeah. Yeah. It, it needed an update. Well, he's he's just so tiny. He is. Right? 25 mils. Yeah, he's super tiny, and now he's going to be big, and he's going to fit. Um, what do you think about the smoke effects. Now, I did see that in I his like old it. model, he had a little smoke effect, and now there's a big smoke effect. I think it offers a big opportunity for painters. It is optional. Really? Yep, he's got two different backpacks. He's got one with, one without, so you're, you're not married to doing the smoke effect. So, cool. often when we talk about painting, we talk about other games and other models, and MCP, Marvel Crisis Protocol, is one that I play and paint, and a lot of those models have got various explosions, smoke, magic effects, the new energy, model. energy things on them, right? And uh, I don't always love that. You want to have it optional. Yeah, I, and I like that they did it optional, but I'm curious what your opinion is of having that big smoke effect and should the GW models move into this sort of having effects mm. or is that not really the kind of thing that they do i think it tells a story but i'm going to say that i don't get an opinion on this because i don't i have not painted a model with these effects uh the worst i've done is big rocks i've i'm currently painting that tor garadon with the with the tactical rock um and all these new models with all these you know fancy things like you got the far sight with all the cherry blossoms, you got the snick rot with the smoke grenades, and now you've got this guy. I don't. I've never painted a model like that. I'd like to, and once I do, uh, I'll give you my opinion. But till then, I'm I'm on the fence. Yeah, and I suppose you know my master possession. He's got fire all over him. You know, so we've always we've always had flames and good. things. But I ju I just wonder like, the difference is the new Asmodai, That smoke effect is big. Like it drapes, it drapes out of the skulls on both sides of his power pack and down almost. I I think it touches the ground. Yeah, it does. And uh, I I really appre I I appreciate them making it an optional bit because if they were to move to doing that a lot, 
you know, mon- monopose versus multi-part becomes a big debate to begin with. But I think if you started getting forced to do a big energy wave every single time on many, many guys, that would, trust me, that would be obnoxious. Oh, my gosh. I just noticed that the new interrogator chaplain has his sword in a fallen helmet. Like, on the ground, it's stuck into a fallen helmet. That is neat. That's funny. What yeah. el- you uh, back ba- back to me on the bits yeah, box? Go, go ahead, yeah. Okay, so uh, I said that I've been a very very bad hobbyist. I have not done a single thing to any of my models since the last time that we were here. I did, however, go and play the Homey Craig Fall Invitational, which is what I'm calling the Homey Craig inviting people out to his house and playing outside. Invitational. Yeah. You gotta have it. You can't just show up at Craig's house. It'd be rude. Yeah, you gotta get an invite. Yeah, you gotta get an invite. The doorman has to let you in. Yeah, that's right. He's <laughs> he's got a mater D and everybody. But we played the new mission, which we talked about last week, which is the um, Space Marines. Yeah, it's the imagining of the Space Marines game at the end, where Titus has to stop the Chaos Lord from completing a ritual and ascending, and. I did not realize, because I did not read the rules very closely, that if I, the defender, plays 2,000 points, that I am up against 3,000 points of attacker. Oof. Yes, and it was an epic onslaught. Uh, It was super balanced. It was super close. Uh, It was really fun. I mean, we had so much fun, because it was wild. I brought Abaddon and made him the Chaos Lord on on the ritual point with the Terminators. And in turn, yeah, and in, yeah. ter- in turn five, he f- he fell and he was dead, and that scored thirty something points for the your, uh, your army for the Death Watch is yeah. who I was fighting. You had a pyric pyric victory. Yeah, and uh, I ended up getting him on points by like two or three points was all, but it looked amazing. It's on X. We've got video. And we've got pictures from it. Uh, everything was painted. He brought two of these uh, Death Watch gunship things, and they were they were awesome. Harkin jumped out and Raptor shocked the first one and killed it, and then got murdered by just a huge amount of kill team fire. It was so good, and I said to Craig, "I'm like I would pay Games Workshop book money for a book of these type of missions that are not." necessarily match play but that have some narrative focus some backstory and some balance you know some asymmetric elements to them and he was like well they're in white dwarf i'm like what he said yeah he runs in the house brings out two white dwarf ar- magazines like recent ones and they've got missions of this sort in them that's pretty cool so i'm oh like, yeah yeah but i'm like oh, how is this not better advertised yeah they don't talk about it much. they don't talk you about you it do enough. see it in the warhammer community articles but man they post a lot of those yeah so they post it gets, po- gets drowned out they post a lot of those and sometimes they'll talk about white dwarf and they won't mention that oh by the way there's missions that are gonna be super fun because it was super fun and yeah. so the next time that it go out They've to, got to the r- craig fall invitational i said Pick us out another. They've got one for the Red Gobbo. Oh, see? Uh, yeah. See? It's on an article on the Warhammer community. But, yeah, um, that's I've, I've loved that you've been talking about that because that's really cool. Yeah, I, I want to I play it again. I want to see. Um, we might have to go 1,000, 2,000. 3,000. Wait, do you have 3,000 points of orcs? No. <laughs> do I look like this floor <laughs> is full of orcs? No. Well, what if you brought the bi- the big stompa thing? I'd be like 800 points, so I'd be like around 2800, I think. You know, that'd be close enough that'd for be government close, work. Close, yeah. We could run it. We could see it. We could see if the green tide could dislodge the chaos lord. But I still need to paint the stompa. I think it would be really funny too that <laughs> that in place of Captain Titus, big big old stompa. <laughs> it's just some some work war boss or just a grot. Just jumping around. So, as you were kind of talking about the narrative, and uh, we're talking about the awesome Space Marine mission that they have, 
We also had another thing happen at the Atlanta Georgia Open, which was the narrative campaign tournament. Have you heard about this? The no, that doesn't. You, those words don't go together. I've been meaning to talk about this for weeks, but I kept forgetting, and I just remember this week at the Atlanta Georgia uh, World Championships, they had a narrative campaign where many, many people played. Lots of different factions were involved, and War uh, Games Workshop has decided that whatever the outcome and whatever happens in this narrative campaign will affect the actual Warhammer setting. I love that. I know, right? That's similar to the uh, to the Leviathan vote. They had a 3D like printout of the map as different armies took different sectors of the solar system, of the Palat system. Really cool, right? I mean, that's the stuff you can do when thousands you had of people show up. You had show your up. chaos boys show up. You had a bunch of people. I think that's great. Hopefully, we'll hear about the results about that soon. I ha- I tried looking it up, but I couldn't find it. Chaos won the whole thing. Yeah, you think? Somebody, somebody. W- well, I don't oh, know. The tournament, no, tournament. Th- yeah, just not the, the narrative. The, uh, right, yeah. the match play world championship. Yeah, what what what, what army was that? I have. Just I mean, chaos? I have no idea. I have no and idea. And I did hear what they won. Did you hear about this? No. What a workshop has again teamed up with Games Workshop to make an amazing Lieutenant Titus statue. The thing is about as big as my toddler, who is two, or maybe your average Warlord Titan, whoever you ask. The thing is massive, hand sculpted, looks great, and he is dunking on a Tyranid. Blood everywhere, swappable heads, swappable weapons, and it's great. They revealed to the first place winner, hey, you won first prize? Here you go. We would be remiss as uh, 40K content creators if we did not take this opportunity to say, Warlord Titan. Man, I would love a Warlord yeah, Titan. And now, now that that's done, <laughs> uh, I don't think I have anything else for the bits box. Yeah, I think I'm pretty dry, dried up. Close it. Close it. What's the topic today? Well, the today's topic, we're talking about our two Death Guard uh, for the, no- the results. November competition results. All right. Yeah. How many votes did we get? Because I saw the one on X. and I posted it pretty much everywhere. So, Casey, I think that we're going to have to pay for Twitter. Pay for Twitter? I think we're going to have to pay for it. Elon Musk can... <laughs> no, I mean, I un- on one hand, sure. On the other, I don't think you get traction any other way on oh the platform. Gosh. Okay, well, uh, yes, Twitter results were a little lame. We only had, like, a couple votes on there, but I did have a few people reach out to me personally and give their vote. And TikTok, you guys blew that baby up. You did. My my 1,200 followers, you guys kind of loved that thing. So, drum roll. We had the Bellboy versus the Blightspawn. Two different uh, Death Guard from two different units, the Foul Blight Spawn and the one of the uh, Death Guard, I believe they're called the Accursed Chosen, and uh, he's got like a hook with a bell over his head. Anyways, Shane painted one, I painted the other, and we both s- took it to you guys to see who painted it best. We were very careful to not let anyone know who painted what. Yes, and in the lead with a mass of 16 votes... <laughs> I know, they blew it up, didn't they? They blew it up. <laughs> 16 votes. And that's after I counted all of them. Sub- everywhere. Subscribing to... Is the bellboy. Hey! Hey! I won. Yeah! Uh, well, jeez. Reveal it, why don't you? Yes, uh, the bellboy won. Painted by Shane. Hail to the chief. Um, Well, I want to thank uh, me... And myself for all the hard work that I put in. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I like, I like this type of thing. It's fun. We need to be doing this often, and I think that we can. I don't think it's going to be terribly difficult to gin up some actual interest where we can have pretty huge voting numbers on this kind of thing because I think the community could really have fun. Yeah, I took it to Instagram, took it to TikTok, took it to Twitter. We also took it to uh, our local community, asked them, and a few reached out to me. So, yeah, that's pretty much 16 to uh, 4. What do you think? So we've both seen each other's models. We've both inspected them. What do you think makes a difference? Because I did not count on winning, but I did think that I might. 
Well, you know, um, the photos you took were great. Lightroom really helped out, and I think <sighs> I don't want to say that it might be the model, but because they're both really unique, right? <laughs> So I thought that your blight spawn model was cooler than my model because yours is like yours is a character, right? Yes, mine is a character. Yours is, I believe, an elite. Back when we had elites. Yes. He's uh, an other sheet these days. In both tent. of them have nerglings. Both of them are in just basic kind of armor. Uh, yours was a chosen of Mortarian, the guy with the big bell hanging over him. For anybody who wants to look. So. so I think the reason why mine resonated with the masses of 16 people. <laughs> well, a lot of people liked the video. Or liked the pictures of videos. Yeah. So. I think that the uh, I think the thing is mine is a little more grimdark with the blood, with the dirty apron. That was the thing. is Once I got him built, I did not love the model. I didn't like how he had... How the how his apron he's he's wearing just a big I guess it's a butcher's vest essentially all the way down from tabard his, sort yeah of. Fr from his neck clear down to the ground and I didn't really love that because you don't get a lot of armor going on so I decided I'm gonna make this look like he's been busy and I and I think that really I pulled that off really strong and that's what made it go for people is he looks like he just got done chopping dudes up like he went whirlwind in a crowd yeah with w yeah with all of his big swung around. with all of his big flails attached to him he he just has gone ham and is standing there on some <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you went crazy with the blood effects on him like yeah and so back to what i was saying though about how i like this sort of little competition is i like when i've got one model I mean, maybe this makes sense because I've got so many characters. And you just go full ball sack on the one guy. And it doesn't take as long? I mean, it it, takes, it, 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 it can take long however long. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but you know that whatever you do to this one, you don't have to do again nine more times. Fair. Four more times. Yeah. Three more times, that right? That is something I love about doing my one-offs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So um, I, I, thi I think that this sort of thing really works well for my painting style because I used... Every trick I know on that guy. Yeah, you used uh, shades. You used a lot of selective highlights. You used uh, airbrush zenithal. You used uh, technical paint from the blood blood spatter. Gosh, I'm seeing like uh, just. I, I use I use the dirty down on the uh, on the bells and stuff. On I, his kneecaps. I did a little glow on his plasma. I just did everything I know how to do. Yeah. And uh, tell us about the nurgling, Shane. Yeah, and so the nurgling was fun, right? Um, the Nurgling is, and you did the same thing. Your Nurgling looks amazing. Your model looks amazing. I thought, because you're, you went very bright with yours, and you did such an incredible job on the glass, on his bile pack or whatever we would call that, uh, I thought that would be it. And I focused on that in the pictures that I took. Because that's, yeah. I feel that is so strong, and that highlights your cleanliness of paint job so well. But again, it doesn't have quite the same grim dark aesthetic. But going back to the Nurgling, I painted him like a whole other character. I'm like, he's going to get his own little highlight pass. He's going to get his own. He looks great. Shading. He's going to get his own little details. And uh, he really turned out because people love a Nurgling, don't they? People really do. They love the sassy Nurgling, especially because that thing looks so funny. But a Nurgling can really spice up a uh, Death Guard model, just like a like a Watcher in the Dark can do a a uh, Dark Angels model. Oh, that would be so fun to paint one of those little dudes. Those new Death Knight Terminators get a new Watcher in the Dark. Love it. And guess what he's got? Smoke effect. Oh yeah, and uh, you know they also come with a uh, teleport Homer. True. Yeah, because they're Terminators. Yeah, they're gonna do that thing. My Chaos Terminators don't do that. They don't have that thing. I mean, and they they term and they uh, they teleport too. Maybe it's they're saying you know it's more of a lore perspective. They use a ritual instead of a teleport. I don't know, but they do teleport. Yeah. So that's weird. Well, I think they teleport early, like with the Homer thing, like the like the uh, Ultramarine Terminators do. That the Chaos Space Marines do not. They can deep strike. But I don't yeah. think I don't think they get like the rapid ingress that you can get essentially for free with the teleport homer 
in the regular good guy Space Marines. So did you want to talk about mine, or did you want me to talk about mine? Um, I talked about the part I like on yours, which was which was the glass. But uh, go ahead and go ahead and comment on yours. Man, I you did it. You did a new thing. I've been messing around with non-metallic metal. Yep. And I decided, you know what? Death Guard is always green. It's always green. It's always that you know sickly or mm, snot green. And then I thought, I'm gonna do something different. I I always see a dark green Death Guard with a yellow green slime. And then I see a green Nurgling hanging off of it. So I thought, what else looks sickly? So I painted him my favorite color to paint, yellow. You've been doing a lot of yellow. Yep. Painted the whole boy yellow, did the highlight pass, and then I just washed him with a bunch of Tesseract Glow, which is the uh, glow effect paint from Games Workshop, and he looked dope. I loved it. I, I, was, I had that moment of fear that painters get, I want to try something new. And then right when you're about to go, you have a heart attack because you think it's going to look terrible. That was the entirety of the process mm-hmm. on mine. Yeah, did Just because, again, though, this is what you get when you paint one thing, like one character. Yeah. Looks good. You get to just go nuts and see what happens. And even if you have to go back and fix and fix and fix, yeah, you just have the one to do. I tried to make my nurgling look kind of slimy. I put like a... I don't think it really showed off enough. Uh, I put uh, some effects on him to make him look slimy. I forget what it's called, like Storm Shield or something like that. Um, and yeah, as you said before, the cracked uh, glass, I painted it half full. <laughs> you, you have found the cheat code for all <coughs> containers is if you want them to be glass, they cannot be full. Yeah, you got to make them look kind of like they spilled. And it, it makes sense on this because like a lot of the... He's got holes in his stuff, and stuff's leaking out. I mean, even the grenade the Nurgling has, there's a little bit dripped onto the grenade. <laughs> so, yeah, I love it. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I think he's really good. How many votes did he get? He got four. But I did post more photos of him from the front perspective rather than the side profile. I don't know. Uh, but I think yours more traditional Death Guard. So I think more traditional Death Guard players like him. You know... Having painted him, I could see myself doing Death Guard. Death Guard are cool. Death they Guard are cool. And you they're a bit of hypocrites. The thing I liked about Death Guard is you can really go nuts. Yeah. Like on that one paint job. They're unique. You can just go nuts. But not as customizable. That's okay. Okay. I don't need them to be. Okay. I have uh, an entire two kill team <laughs> sprues worth of particulars and another one coming of night lords yeah and uh yeah. you know that takes me back to the point that i had earlier about uh, 10th edition and weapons and i want to say i came in at toward the end of ninth yeah just before arcs of omen so i did play a couple you of fought like a pro well i i played a couple of games with the um nephilim gt pack where you still had uh detachment requirements and yeah. stuff and that was challenging and the rules were hard to keep straight because they were not terribly centrally located you did not have any sort of unit cards i disliked how all your characters had an aura so you had to keep track of that and also they couldn't leave from the front because of lookout sir yep which felt very lame to me i hated lookout sir Throw me nuts. And now, yeah, and also it created instances where you always wanted your character to fight last in a combat. You always wanted them to go last. Mm. I can't I, I can't even I can't even communicate to you why that was, but it's a funny rule. It's very there, hard to understand. I, I I believe there were reasons why it needed to be that way. But I, I you know what I could be tripping. Anyway, in tenth edition, of course. You take Abaddon, you stick him with whoever you want, and you, well, quick disclosure, a little, little tangent, an aside. I thought Abaddon could lead Legionnaires, Terminators, and Chosen. So I've taken him to a few games with Chosen. Craig was like, I didn't think he could lead Chosen. I'm like, what? Of course he can lead Chosen. How could he not lead Chosen? Flips Abaddon's unit card over cannot lead chosen. Oh no. So <laughs> I've been cheating. You've been cheating. I've been cheating, but I'm copping to my cheating. I didn't know. Oh, at least you know you're doing it. Um, I think I lost both of those games. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh that I that I had been cheating. But anyhow, 
Uh, and in 10th edition, you attach your character to the unit and you set your character right up there in the front so that they can make base-to-base -base contact and know good and darn well that they're going to get to fight. Yeah, there's a lot of hero hammer going on in 10th. Oh, and I love it. It's my favorite it's thing because you, you get to paint one thing. You get to paint one character. And go full ball sack. But uh, another thing that I like and this ties into that new Night Lord's Kill team being released and the oh, sort of so and, and the level of WYSIWYG that I'm able to get off of my Legionnaires also being from the uh, Nakbun Kill Team box and having that extra sprue. I really like how we have so few named melee weapons. Go on. So, in the Chaos Space Marine, which is the one that I know, there's there tends to be a chain sword. And a, quote, accursed weapon. That's it. That's true. I mean, there's a, there's also a heavy melee weapon, which is like your anti-vehicle one. Mm -hmm. So that's like a chain axe, traditionally. Yeah. Um, some stuff has a power fist, and they call it, they go ahead and call it a power fist. But, like, just for your, your rank-and-file bunch of dudes... You just get generic stuff. You you kind of just get, like, four, I think, because I want, maybe there is a power fist as well. But the main ones you get are... A chainsword and an accursed weapon. Yeah, that's going to be the most of, most of your stuff. And so, a cursed weapon gets to cover your in ninth edition parlance, your demon blade, and your your black mace or whatever it was. You know, all like the special weapons and things. Yeah. And now you're gonna have a guy with like a chainsaw pike, and that'll be an accursed weapon. I'll say. You know. It'll have his kill team rules, of course, but I'll be like, "That's the that's the champ with his accursed weapon, and these guys have chain swords." Nothing fancy, yeah. It just makes it so easy to end up with a really cool looking unit, and then you say, "Chain sword, chain sword, chain sword." That guy with the demon sword, that's an accursed weapon, or that guy with the power mace, that's an accursed weapon, or that guy with the yeah. or that guy with the raptor claws. You know, I have, I have the Shreve Talon guy that comes from the Legionaries Kill Team, which is a guy with like some skins on his shoulders, and he's got two knives. That's yeah, and that sounds like an accursed weapon to me. So he tends to be the champ of a group of five. You and know, he power knives thing. are a thing in 40k. I mean, I'm not mad about it. That's a thing. Is it called that though it's in the data sheets? It's called a power sheets? knife. Is well, it? I, in the data sheets, right. I don't know. But the and see, that's what I like about ten. There, it would be really cool to have power knives. Well, and you can just call something a power knife, except yeah, it'll fair. be called a whatever it is in the good guy parlance. You see what I'm saying? It's a really nice way to do it. Now, I am also with guns. I'm not so such a fan of this. I do think that we should be paying for war gear because yeah, we've talked about this. Yeah, a, a, bit. a bolt gun. And a reaper chain auto cannon, and a missile launcher, and a heavy bolter are not the same thing. Just remember who turned you on to the reaper chain auto cannon, my good sir. Oh, that was you. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. But anyway, I, I I have a lot. I have so much good stuff you, to say about yes. tenth edition lately. Tenth edition is wow. It's there's a lot. There's a couple of you know there are two camps. There are probably more than two camps, but there's one camp that's loud on the internet that's like, everything's broken and this is terrible and we don't like it. I love it. I have not had any games where there has not been fun had. Yeah, dude, the games are fun in 10. They're always fun. Uh, Unless it, you're fighting knights or something. Well, I mean, even if you're fighting knights, they can't, they can't Overwatch anymore. That's true. <laughs> that's um, true. <laughs> also, also, and as we are making this up as we yeah. go along and making our time, and having no main topic to speak of. I do have an axe to grind with Overwatch. Specifically, Overwatch and Torrent weapons. For your one CP, you can take a whole bunch of flamers and hit me a dozen times and roll some wounds during my turn. And I feel like that that is many orders of magnitude more effective than any other use case of an, of an Overwatch. As someone who doesn't bring a lot of flamers and doesn't really care for them, I find it to be the height of cheese that any tank that I could put together may get two, three, 
hits at a push, right, on an Overwatch for one mm-hmm. CP. Whereas a troop of whatever squishy boys can just light up their flamers and get, you know, 36 wound rolls. Yeah. Which will convert however. I mean, in the case of heavy flamers, they're going to convert pretty good on threes mm-hmm. usually. And I feel that this is my, this is my idea to fix 40k. What well, how do you fix 40k? If you overwatch with torrent weapons, cost you 2 CP. For for 1 CP. What an interesting take. It's such an easy fix though. And and you you know that Games Workshop believes that the f- the flamer overwatch is a bit cheesy because they made it so that knights yep. just can't even titanic stuff just can't even do That's it anymore true. because it was silly that you couldn't approach them but they'd why overwatch two? you well because 1 and 2 cp is the sort of um units of measurement that we use for for uh stratagems so you think 1 would be fine no no 1 is what it is oh yeah okay nice you i'm saying that okay. i'm saying it's like overwatch is unchanged if you've got a if you've got a tank with a bunch of weapons uh, that are not torrent, mm-hmm. then you get to do regular one CP Overwatch. Yeah, I but do if you if you want to do the torrent weapons, cost you two, I d- and that's it. I do predict a lot, a lot of Salamanders players coming out of the woodwork here in the coming days. Hey, it's o- uh, I'm, I'm not saying make torrent have a hit roll. Yeah, that's yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah, you're not. I'm just saying that all those free hits that you get on your turn have to cost you extra to get those free get hits it. when it's not your turn. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. That is a oh, I like that. But you know what? I do. I like that because, you know, it's if it's in somebody else's turn, that makes sense. I just feel like that and and again, my my reason for the increase in cost is the cost I feel should be representative of the effectiveness. And if I take my Forge Fiend and I go to Overwatch and it's got 12, <laughs> it's got up to 15 shots and, oh and, a, and a little man. blast action. Okay, out of 15 shots, I'm only expecting to get two and may get three hits. You, uh, you remember that game we played where I popped my Killikens to take down your Forge Fiends? Yeah, that was nice. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, but it, but oh but again, I, I, ju- I just, the, the whole of my point, and I hope that I've made it very clear and you very thorough, clear, yeah. because you know how people get on the internet, which come at, at him, everyone. I mean, come at get me. Him. Where, where are you all? Uh, how do we have so many listeners and so little hate? You know, we did. You have cannot a, possibly like us that much. We did have a negative comment on a YouTube video not long ago. Hurt my feelings a little bit. Did it? A little, just a little bit, but I've, I've recovered. Was it about you? It was about one of the lore videos I did. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, it wasn't about the long form? No, it was about the Night Lords episode. Uh oh, you in trouble? You in yep. trouble? But it is what it is. No, you can't. Uh, We've you got a few people saying to keep going. You can't ever let the internet be mean to you. You know what? And I've always said that, you know. But finally, I'm now here. I am facing it. I'm like, huh? I do be having feelings. Let me tell you a story, Casey. Tell me a story, Shane. And uh, maybe the people in their regular everyday life can uh, take this and use it. Make it quick. So, it is, I play piano for a living. You do. And there have been many times, many instances, probably six or seven in the 15 years that I've been doing this, Ooh. where I've been playing the piano Oh no! at the piano bar, Oh no! where they have a bar top, and then people sit literally right in front of you. Oh, no. Like, you can reach out and touch them. And I've had, again, at least a half dozen times, Ooh. two people be talking, and one guy says... To the other guy or girl, this guy bleeping sucks. Oh no! While I'm sitting there playing and singing and doing my thing. Oh no! Yeah, drunk guys are the. Worst. Oh no! They can be sober. They can be whatever, but they yeah. don't realize that I can hear them, and they apparently are not big fans. Rude, rude people. And uh, the way that w- that you deal with that is you look around, you think to yourself, most of these people are having a good time. I'm getting paid to do this. <laughs> yeah. 
I've not been fired. If you subsequently immediately got fired, that then you got to look at yourself. Yeah. However, what you do in these cases is you say, "Well, those people are incorrect." Shake it off. Shake it off. Ooh, like, ooh. like literally, and it's the same Taylor thing. Taylor Swift, give me money. It's the same, and uh, she might take some money for that, <laughs> but I don't think she's gonna give it. She do got it like that though. <laughs> Taylor Swift. If Shane's you a secret, ca- a secret Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> Tizzle Swizzle, if you want to uh, <laughs> shout out, even in even in lawsuit, the 40K Fanatics podcast, I feel like that would raise Gosh. the tides. W- I'd be broke, but f- semi-famous. <laughs> I, I think we'd be able to overcome. Oh, boy. Because right now, she would be squeezing all the blood Ooh, out of this turnip. man. Anyway, back to my, to land my plane here. Yes, land your plane. Uh, we have 900 listens this month. One person on a YouTube video, which is not even what we m- primarily do, didn't like it. Yeah, that's fair. He's probably wrong. Wrong. He wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's fair. And that's how Casey is going to sleep tonight. Yeah. Um, if you're out there, go ahead and share us on. Check out our socials. Sh- share us wherever you see us. Uh, like our stuff. Comment. And subscribe. We appreciate it all. I hope that everyone has had a lovely turkey day. I hope you got to eat a lot. Um, For those, for our international viewers, this is where we uh, give thanks for uh, running out all the folks that were here first. Give thanks for Nurgle's gifts and blessings upon your soul and your body. Our, our... (laughs) Our UK pe- listeners are gonna be. Uh, they're they're gonna wonder why don't We're we do things. Why don't we do Thanksgiving? They'll think because we be running people out of their house f- from way back. There's gonna be a COVID spike. <laughs> there cannot be. Um, uh. that's all I have. Today's episode has been brought to you by Rolling Video Productions for all of your Northeast Arkansas video production needs. We'll see you next time. Yep, from us here at 40K Fanatics. See you. <laughs>